six-point win to clinch the seventh seed in the Western Conference playoffs. The win set up a first-round matchup with the defending champion Denver Nuggets. Game one is Saturday in Denver. LeBron led the Lakers with 23 points, nine assists, and nine rebounds. The Lakers really helped themselves by making 26 of 29 free throws. New Orleans will host Sacramento Friday night, the win against the eighth seed in the West. Sacramento beat Golden State last night. We may have seen the end of an era with Golden State's early elimination. Steph Curry is 36 and Klay Thompson is a free agent. Thompson was 0 for 10 from the floor in perhaps his last game with Golden State. Thompson, Curry, and Draymond Green won 420 games together and four NBA championships. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson. More news, opinions, and conversation when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. Hi, I'm Tavis Smiley. And I'm Captain Mayor Emma Sharif. You have no doubt been hearing promos and expert conversations on our various weekday shows and downloading details at KBLA1580.com about our climate justice campaign, which is now in full effect. The city of Compton is pleased to partner with KBLA Talk 1580 to celebrate Earth Day 2024 as we serve, share, and help our city shine. And KBLA Talk 1580 is just as excited to join the city of Compton as we broadcast live and bring our KBLA delegation with us to help clean and beautify our community, and you are invited to join us. Come meet us on Saturday, April the 20th, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at 212 West Cypress Street in Compton as we fan out to clean up our city. The first 50 KBLA listeners to hit our website at kbla1580.com will receive a free KBLA tea when you join us on Saturday morning, April 20th, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at 212 West Cypress Street in Compton. Now, no show no shirt, but sign up at kbla1580.com right now to help us clean up Compton as part of Earth Day 2024. We will see you on Saturday, April the 20th, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at 212 West Cypress Street in the city of Compton to do our part for Earth Day 2024. We are KBLA Talk 1580, caring about the climate, caring about the community, cleaning up Compton. Tavis Smiley, and I am thrilled to have you hanging out with us today in this hour of our program. I've been looking forward to this hour. And in this hour, a conversation for the hour with outgoing Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox, uh, who I, I hope will take some time to look back at her eight-year run as the chief prosecutor of America's second largest county, the first black woman elected to the powerful post. She has opted not to seek re-election and has acknowledged criticism for the handling of certain cases, like the one uh, against actor Jesse Smollett. But Cook County State's attorney is a long way from Chicago's Cabrini Green housing project. You might know that from the Good Times TV series if you're not from Chicago. But there are so many accomplishments to acknowledge in this hour as well, and we'll do all of that now that I am pleased to be joined by uh, the present but soon to be former <laughs> Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox. How are you today? I'm good, Travis. What an honor to be with you this afternoon. No, it's an honor to have you on. Thank you for the hour. I know how busy your schedule is, and I'm just thrilled that we have uh, these 60 minutes uh, or a little bit less now. Uh, we'll make the most of it to talk to you. So thank you, thank you, thank you for just putting us on your docket. I know all kinds of folk are asking you for conversations, uh, and I just feel very humbled that um, um, you thought enough of us to, to put us on your schedule. So thank you for that, Kim, to, to begin with. Let, of let, course. Let me, let me start with this. Um, so why the decision not to run a game? Yeah. So when I ran in 2016, I, I had a mission. Um, I wanted to transform our criminal justice system here in Cook County that had a long and perilous legacy of police misconduct, prosecutorial misconduct, um, a swelling jail population, ongoing violence um, in communities like the one that I grew up in. And so I, I knew that there were things that I wanted to do, but I also knew, just as importantly, that I didn't want to be a career politician. Mm -hmm. 
And so I, I knew uh, that I was going to have some self-imposed term limits uh, as a mom who's the last of my children are graduating from high school this year as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew that, that, that there, this was a finite job. And so I needed to do as much as I can while I had it, uh, but that I would not be doing this uh, for the rest of my career. Yeah, so you you know I'm pulling and praying for you because I know you got them girls about to go off to college. So you're gonna be, <laughs> <laughs> you <Yes. laughs> you about to be in in a minute with uh, with with two or three of them in school at the same time. So I'm, I'm you 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 on my yes. pra- you on my four. prayer list, Kim Fox. Yeah, four yes. of them. Yeah, you on my you. you on four my prayer list. College. Yeah, yes. that's crazy. But that but that but that but let me, let me just let me just let me follow you. I'm gonna follow you the whole hour anyway. That 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 is okay. a blessing. I was just in a conversation the other day with somebody about this. I'm one of ten kids. And I am the first person in the history of my family on either side, my mother or my father's side, the first one to go to college. So I broke through that barrier first. But so many of my younger brothers and sisters followed my lead and went to college. Some of them, most of them, I paid for. The one that went to Hampton and the one that went to Morehouse, I helped to get them through. And I, 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 and nothing I've done in my life has made me prouder than to help my siblings get their own college degrees. And literally yesterday, I broke down in tears, just yesterday, when I received in the mail an invitation from my niece, who's now graduating from college. And I got a few nieces and nephews who are graduating over the next couple of years. The point is that I'm the one person who went first, and that one person has now changed the trajectory of my own family. So I know that education can be, can be, um, a great equalizer. And so here you are now. Um, we'll talk about Cabrini in a moment, but it must be a beautiful thing to, to just know that you got four four babies and they're going to go off to college as well. That 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 story is, is that, I mean, I got goosebumps right now, Kim. Absolutely. Listen, my mom was a, a high school dropout. Um, I was born two months before she was supposed to graduate from high school and I was her second child. And so I have been able to, in this generation, um, go to college, go to law school, uh, ascend to this work. And now my own children, uh, my oldest is a junior in college, uh, and I said my youngest uh, will be graduating this year. I took guardianship of a set of sisters Mm -hmm. um, while doing this work quietly. People didn't know uh, that I was raising four teenage girls uh, in, in this landscape and trying to get them through. And my youngest is is committing to Clark Atlanta. Uh, she wants the HBCU experience. I got a kid at Arizona State, um, another one who's looking to travel internationally. Just the fact that those possibilities exist, that they can, can dream of anything that they want to do, um, while their grandmother made so much sacrifice for me, um, it is a privilege. Yeah. No, it's it's an amazing story. It is an amazing story. Um, just getting started in this hour with uh, Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox. Um, uh, a lot, lot to cover in, in this conversation. Uh, I'm thinking about Cabrini and her own personal journey. I'm thinking about some of the cases, uh, national cases, of course, that she has overseen uh, during her eight-year uh, uh, tenure. Uh, I'm thinking of her being the first black woman there. I said on this program yesterday that you think of all these black women now who are in these major positions uh, when it comes to making these kinds of decisions about, frankly, the future of our country. I'm thinking of Fonnie Willis in Georgia. I'm thinking of Letitia James in New York. I'm thinking of Kim Fox in Chicago. Uh, and what it means for so many of these persons to be the first black women to to, to in, uh, inhabit these positions and these roles, and what comes along with that. A lot to talk about with Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox, our guest in this hour on Tavis Smart. Hope, agency, dignity. This is Tavis Smiley. Can you dig it? Come on! Hey, y'all. Mona Swain here from Target's new YouTube series, My Card is Full, where we feature black founders and creators highlighting their connection to our community. As an actor and content creator, I love using my voice to inspire young black women who look like me. When it comes to feeding my shine, seeing myself reflected in black-owned and founded products at Target brings me joy. Together, we are Black Beyond Measure. Learn more at Target.com slash Black Beyond Measure. Cookie wants to be a professional wrestler. 
I'm Cookie Serratos and I'm 11 years old. She also wants to win all the medals. That's why Cookie and her family make every day count, squeezing out her best with Go Go Squeeze. Okay, Cookie, let's break for a Go Go Squeeze. Go Go Squeeze fruit on the go pouches are a nutritious snack made from 100% fruit with no sugar added. Go Cookie! Because when you nurture your kids, you squeeze out the best in them. Squeeze out the best with Go Go Squeeze. Not a low calorie food. Products range from 11 to 13 grams of sugar and 60 to 70 calories per serving. There are many healthcare organizations serving our community. Not all are dedicated to community partnerships that educate, build trust, inspire hope, and improve outcomes. Providence has a robust community outreach program and has dedicated $50 million over the next five years to support organizations addressing health disparities in local communities of color. Examples of this commitment include the Biddy Mason Community Wellness Center on the first AME campus, providing medical screenings, mental health therapy, nutrition, and culturally sensitive holistic classes. The Black Mama's Glowing Peer Support Group that focuses on maternal mental health, birth planning, and social support. Providence is committed to building trusted partnerships with community organizations to better understand and dismantle structural, racial, and cultural barriers to better health. During Minority Health Month, Providence is sponsoring Health for a Better World. Informative conversations with Providence health professionals on Urban Family Focus every Saturday in April at 7 a.m. To find a Providence Health System facility near you, log on to Providence.org. We used to argue about whose turn it was to clean the gutters, but then I had Leaf Filter gutter protection installed. Wait, I told you Leaf Filter had free inspections and estimates and a lifetime guarantee. Meaning we never have to argue about whose turn it is to clean the gutters again. But I visited LeafFilter.com slash beacon first. No, I did. It doesn't matter who. Visit LeafFilter.com slash beacon to schedule your free gutter inspection and get up to 30% off today. See representative for warranty details. Promotion is 20% off plus a 10% senior or military discount. One discount per household. Without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional-grade industrial supplies. Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Ready to re-examine your assumptions and expand your inventory of ideas? More of Tavis Smiley coming your way right now. More of Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox coming your way right about now. We've already mentioned it a couple times, uh, Kim Fox, so let me just go there first. Tell me about growing up in Cabrini. I mentioned many people know, uh, folk in Chicago, of course, uh, know all about it. Uh, Folk outside of Chicago and around the world know about it from good times. But tell me about growing up in Cabrini. Man, yeah, I grew up at 624 West Division in the heart of Cabrini, what we would call the White Projects. Uh, which are right across the way from the red ones um, to denote the color of the bricks uh, Mm. raised by my mom, who was a teenager, uh, two babies by the time she was 18. And my grandmother, who was, you know, a primitive Baptist church going, praying grandmother who took care of my mom and her kids and her four other children and their kids, a community that, you know, certainly was was ravaged by violence, um, that was impoverished, that was neglected by the rest of the city, but had some of the hardest working, loving, dedicated people I'd ever met. So you, we talk about um, the gig economy. There was a gig economy, you know, when I was growing up, who sold candy on the fifth floor, my grandmother who sold Avon, <laughs> folks who sold Icy Cup, people who drove folks to the grocery store. I mean, I grew up grew up with, with, with a gig economy, with a hustle economy, and just people who looked after one another when the systems didn't look after us. And so I, I look back at my time at Cabrini with such fondness is why I talk about it everywhere I go, because people have expectations for what people in Cabrini can do. Yeah. And the systems, the systems have set those expectations up. And, and so it's important for me in my story to talk about what is possible um, for those kids who grew up in that environment. How did you process, how did you navigate your way through, uh, if I can put it this way, the soft bigotry of those low expectations? You know, I I also have to like level set. It wasn't even just that I was talented, right? So I want to tell people I am not exceptional in what, what, 
Cabrini could produce. We had opportunity, right? So we moved from Cabrini when I was in third grade to Lincoln Park, which was one mile north in one of the most affluent neighborhoods in, in the city. Mm-hmm. And we were poor. We couldn't afford to live in Lincoln Park. We We just were in Lincoln Park. I moved every year from third grade until I graduated from high school um, with a point of homelessness my junior year. And it was so we could go to the premier magnet school, LaSalle Language Academy, that taught French, German, Italian, Spanish from kindergarten on up, um, that had trips to the Art Institute, had annual trips to Paris, uh, Barcelona, to Madrid. Um, That public education, a mile from where I was. And so when I got there, it was very much, and I remember very being acutely aware that, you know, they were wondering, could I read at the same level? Now, these were kids who were taking Spanish from kindergarten. I'm now in third grade. And then saying, well, you have to catch up. It might be difficult for you. Uh, and my mother, who was just old enough to get us there, was like, absolutely not. You will not have different expectations for my child. And it was, I was very keenly aware because I was there and you could see it. And I'd also be back at my grandmother's in Cabrini. And I knew I was that they weren't smarter than me, that they weren't better. Um, and it made me, however, hyper ambitious to prove um, that it didn't matter where I came from. I, I was a gifted child. Um, and we were going to, I was going to outperform the expectations they had for me. Yeah. And that early indoctrination to having to perform to those low expectations helped me throughout, you know, my childhood, college, and even the job that I have today. Yeah. Um, I'm going to let you talk to my board out right quick, Kim. Your, your phone is starting to, starting to uh, wobble on me, and uh, this conversation is too important and being heard by too many people across the country for us not to hear everything that uh, Kim Fox is saying. Uh, in case you've just tuned in, our guest in this hour for the hour is uh, soon to be former Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox. Um, joining us live from Chicago, and uh, this is live radio, and so sometimes um, these phones uh, decide to act up at the wrong time, and I don't want to spend the rest of the hour with you uh, struggling to hear what she has to say, and for that matter, I got headphones on, and I'm struggling to hear certain parts, and I don't want that to be the case. So let's get that solved right quick. Um, But it's important to have her on for a number of reasons. One, as I intimated earlier, um, her backstory that you've heard just a bit of right now, coming from uh, Cabrini Green, those housing projects in Chicago, uh, is, uh, is is quite a tale, um, and it reminds us uh, of what we are capable of, what we can do uh, when we have opportunity. Uh, speaking of Chicago, I quote him all the time. Jesse Jackson uh, told me years ago, Jackie Robinson wasn't the first brother who could play baseball with the, with the white boys. He was the first one who they gave the opportunity to play baseball uh, with the white guys. Uh, and so opportunity makes a difference. Uh, and so you hear uh, Kim Fox telling us that um, she had some opportunity. Uh, it's not just that she's gifted or talented. Clearly she is. But it makes a difference when you get an opportunity to prove um, your talents, to prove your skill, to prove your worth. Uh, and so I want to have her on for that reason, uh, but also because she accomplished a great deal over this eight-year period. Uh, we just had on this program, what, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, Chessa Boudin. Uh, out of uh, San Francisco, who was elected, uh, as Kim Fox was, and others during this era when we thought, or at least acted like we wanted a bunch of progressive DAs. And then when they got in, uh, we started trying to pull some of them out. They successfully recalled uh, Mr. Boudin in San Francisco. There's a documentary out now called Beyond Bars about his story, so we had him on. But uh, Kim, again, one of those progressive DAs. So a lot to talk about. I think I got her back on the line now. Kim, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now, as they say? I can hear you. I hope you can hear me. I, I apologize. No, 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 no. It's okay. I want to make sure that, I, as I said a moment ago, that you, you're being heard nationally, and I want to make sure that everybody gets the chance to understand and hear your story uh, as we move through this hour, and I don't want to, uh, you to be uh, uh, garbled the way that you were getting for for, for a second mm-hmm. there. That said, we, we, heard, we, we, heard, we, we did hear what you said. I, 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 want to, I want to just kind of continue this line of um, this uh, questioning, if I can. Uh, now, I sound like an attorney, right? This line of questioning. That didn't come out the way I would like. <laughs> that didn't come out the way I wanted to. I'm not. You're not on the witness stand, as you well know. Um, but 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 it 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 means something um, uh, for me to hear you tell the story of what happens when you are afforded opportunity. And I think about all those kids in Chicago, many of whom are still fighting, Chicago and beyond, who are still fighting for that kind of opportunity. But but I'm also thinking about the ways in which um, we were talking about the expectations or low expectations that people have in Chicago of folk that come out of Cabrini. Um, the same could be said of the way that we view 
in the mainstream media, the city of Chicago. We see Chicago as a great city in many respects, but it's always that city that they use as Exhibit A, they being the other side, when they talk about crime, when they talk about guns. I mean, I'm headed there this summer, as many of us will be for the Democratic Convention. Um, but talk to me about the way your home city uh, is viewed in the national media oftentimes. Well, look, we, we have a reputation for gun violence in this in this city, uh, a reputation that has been almost the entirety of my life. Uh, in fact, even before I was born, people would talk about they'd go overseas and they'd talk about Chicago and people would say, bang, bang, talking about Al Capone. Mm-hmm. So we, we've, we've had a history in Chicago. And the truth of the matter is an unrelenting assault of gun violence the entirety of my life. But I think the, the bigger story is like I talk about the complexity of what it's like to live in Cabrini and violence is we also have a history of redlining a history of disinvestment. You know, when Martin Luther King came to Chicago uh, in the 60s and talked about how it was one of the most racist mm-hmm. cities he'd ever been in. Mm-hmm. And it, you can't decouple the violence that I just described and the absolute disinvestment and structural racism that have created conditions in communities that are largely black and brown and the violence that we see. And so it is a world-class city, let me say that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why we're hosting the DNC. Uh, we have, you know, amazing, uh, you know, culture, architecture, food, people. But we have pockets in our city that have been neglected uh, for decades that are, are dealing with violence, and our children are dealing with violence that we could solve for mm-hmm. if we actually cared and believe that those kids in those neighborhoods could grow up to be yeah. lawyers, doctors, social workers, teachers. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder if I can get you to be uh, uh, to conf- you know, As I said earlier, you're not you're not on the witness stand, but I do want a confession here. <laughs> <laughs> and the confession I'm yeah. looking for is for you to tell me, as Cook County State's Attorney for eight years now, um, what has been the most stubborn problem, the most stubborn issue that you've had to confront. I think the most stubborn issue is gun violence, but Mm -hmm. how we solve for it. I I think we have this notion of good guys, bad guys. I think we have this notion, and and it's generally broken down by race. And as we try to solve for it, we keep doing the same things over and over again. Every beginning of the summer, we brace ourselves for summer violence. Uh, We put in policing strategies to deal with where outbreaks may go. But we don't invest in what we know prevents violence in the first place, which are things that are outside of the criminal justice system, which is a, a education, a quality education for everybody, access to jobs for everybody, access to care. You know, we have kids who have classmates who've been murdered, and they have easier access to guns than they do to a guidance counselor or a trauma counselor. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's been the stubborn issue is that. None of this is new. When I was a high schooler in 1989, I lost a friend to gun violence. And that year we had almost 900 people murdered in the city of Chicago. The fact that we are now almost 35 years later and we are still battling these same issues is because we have ignored what we know will work, which is addressing the root causes of violence. Mm -hmm. So that, that leads me then to this notion of what happens when we say as a nation uh, in certainly major cities that we want to try something different. And that thing that we tried that was different was electing progressive DAs. You were a part of that, that batch, a part of that group. There are others all across the country, your colleagues, you know them better than I do. But I mentioned moments ago, we had Chase Boudin on this program a few weeks ago, talking about this new documentary about his interesting backstory uh, called Beyond Bars. But they successfully recalled him in San Francisco. They've tried that a couple of times here in L.A., where I sit with George Gascon, uh, who you know. Um, so just talk to me about about what, what I what I see, at least, as our sort of political schizophrenia, that we say we want progressive DAs. They get in, they start doing progressive stuff, and then we all start screaming. I mean, but if the question is, who is the weak, yeah, right? right? So when I ran for re-election in 2020, um, it was coming off of the Jussie Smollett case that had generated editorials and papers for almost a year and was being used as a cudgel to get me out. Mm-hmm. And I had a, an opponent who spent $15 million against me, and I beat him by 20 points. Mm-hmm. 
And when we looked at the breakdown of where the support was coming from, the people most impacted by crime, violence, and our justice system overwhelmingly voted for me. Those folks who had a distance from it, so some of our suburban voters, our more affluent voters who wanted a more punitive approach had a different vote. And so I think what you're seeing is not so much a schizophrenia for the electorate, it's by the people who are most impacted by the system want something different. Mm -hmm. And those who have benefited from a system that was more punitive, those who have had a further reach from it, who have more political power oftentimes. In, in San Francisco, it was wealthy uh, corporate you know, tech bros who were financing that. The people who were directly impacted were still voting for a new way to go. Mm -hmm. And so I think within our own parties, we have a disconnect between those who are most harmed by the systems that we have in place, who are crying for something mm -hmm. different, and those who have power and influence who say that they don't want that um, and they don't have to have – they don't have to live that. Oh, yeah. They don't have to live what those repercussions are. I've got two minutes now. We'll continue when we come forward. Let me give you a chance to get started on this answer, and we'll see where we are in two minutes. Um, now that you've been on the inside for eight years as one of the leaders of this system or inside the system, what now is your critique of the system? <laughs> The system. I, 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 heard, I, heard, I heard that equipped. chuckle. I heard that chuckle. I heard that chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. The system is not equipped uh, to hold itself accountable. Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest critique. That mm -hmm. the system, with this much power, the power to deprive people of their freedoms and liberty, the power once in in Illinois to take someone's life, um, is fallible. But it is not equipped to adjust for when it gets it wrong. The fact that we have vacated over 250 wrongful convictions just in the last eight years lead the country in vacating wrongful convictions. And these convictions have happened, many of them decades ago, with men and women sitting in prison in cages for years because, well, an appellate court said it was okay. Well, then a court above that said it was okay. And we sit and look at it and it's so clearly wrong if we weren't here, then what? Yeah. So it's a system that is fallible that has no accountability built and within it. A quick follow-up in 30 seconds. We'll continue when we come forward. Uh, am I naive to, to believe that the primary source of those wrongful convictions in Cook County is racism? I think race absolutely has a, has a role to play. When I look at the number of convictions we vacated, the overwhelming majority of the people whose convictions have been vacated have been black and brown. And by overwhelming majority, somewhere around 94%. Yeah, I knew that was coming. Um, her name is Kim Fox. She is the uh, outgoing Cook County State's Attorney. Uh, my name is Tavis Smiley. We'll continue our conversation when we come forward. Stay with us. What's your quarrel with the world? You're listening to Tavis Smiley. Smiley. Paid for by government.com. Did you know? The United States Mint has issued a new Morgan Silver Dollar coin in proof condition for the first time. Not only that, they are also minted in 99.9% .9 pure silver for the first time ever in history. Coin experts are calling this an amazing opportunity for anyone that knows the enduring popularity of Morgans. But you must hurry. Only 400,000 of these legal tender silver dollars were issued. These first ever Morgan Silver Dollars are brand new with stunning mirror like finish. Minted by the iconic San Francisco Mint. Call now and you're guaranteed a new first ever 99.9% .9 pure silver proof Morgan dollar. To learn more, call 1-800-973-9717. If you order now, you will receive a free coin collector bonus pack, a $25 value free with every order. Call 1-800-973-9717 now to secure your new Morgan silver dollars before they are gone. That's 1-800-973-9717. Glad you could join us on this Wednesday. I'm Mike Moore. Now here's the latest from the Black Information Network. Arizona lawmakers could vote today on repealing an anti-abortion law from 1864. There's been reporting that state Democrats could have enough votes to repeal the law with the help of a few Republicans who hold a one-seat advantage in Arizona's House and Senate. Democratic Governor Katie Hobbs is expected to sign the bill if and when it passes the Senate. 
Blake Griffin is hanging up his basketball shoes. He's retiring from the NBA. He made the announcement on social media Tuesday. The African-American star was drafted first overall in 2009 by the Los Angeles Clippers. He would then go on to play for the Detroit Pistons, Brooklyn Nets, and Boston Celtics. And that's the latest. I'm Mike Moore from your 24-7 news source, the Black Information Network and BINnews.com. True Green is the easiest and most affordable way to get a beautiful lawn. All you have to do is water and mow. And to top it off, when you sign up for an annual plan by April 20th, you get one application free. Call or visit TrueGreen.com today. Restrictions apply. This is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. The Lakers answered the challenge last night in New Orleans and got out of the playing round. They held on for a four-point win to clinch the seventh seed in the Western Conference playoffs. The win set up a first-round match with the defending champion Denver Nuggets. Game one is Saturday in Denver. LeBron led the Lakers with 23 points, nine assists, and nine rebounds. The Lakers really helped themselves by making 26 of 29 free throws. New Orleans will host Sacramento Friday night, the win against the eighth seed in the West. Sacramento beat Golden State last night. We may have seen the end of an era with Golden State's early elimination. Steph Curry is 36, and Klay Thompson is a free agent. Thompson was 0 for 10 from the floor, and perhaps his last game would Golden State. Thompson, Curry, and Draymond Green won 420 games together and four NBA championships. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson. More news, opinions, and conversation when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. <laughs> KBLA Talk 1580. Talk radio. Let's music to your ears. We're unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. I'm Reverend Gerald, the Life Coach. Is someone you love struggling with addiction and mental illness? Is improving your family's health important? Want to leave a legacy that your family can grow? Are you ready to enhance your perception of life experiences? Then wake up weekends at 7 a.m. with Urban Family Focus and get the wisdom, opportunity, resources, and motivation to live your best life. Join the conversation on Urban Family Focus Saturday and Sunday at 7 a.m. Unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got your black. black. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA and go to gawon'twait.com. Yeah, y'all, come on. Come 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 on. At KBLA Talk 1580. We fight the power every day. Yeah, Gotta give us what we want. Uh. Gotta give us what we need. Hey. I listen to KBLA and I love the commercials. I know what the commercials mean. I also, if I'm looking and trying to figure something out, I need something to talk to me that might hit me. And it happens on TV because, you know, every time they show a sporting event, they got the pharmaceutical companies back to back to back telling people how to fix the sickness on the same stuff that they sell them. So we get it. Yep, we get it too, Chucky. And that's why at KBLA Talk 1580, we don't black down. Drop it! Our freedom of speech is freedom of death. We, we got, got to fight the powers that be. Fight the power! Fight the power! Fight the power! Fight the power! Fight the power. Hey, I 
I got a question for you. You hate bending over to put on your shoes. Wish you should just put them on standing or sitting without ever having to touch them. If so, then I have the shoe for you. Introducing new hands-free Skechers Slip-Ins. With new Skechers Slip-Ins, you just step in and off you go. You don't even need to lace up. So how do Skechers Slip-Ins work? Well, there's a special smooth comfort pillow in the heel that helps your foot slide right into place. So just step in them and go. Find new hands-free Skechers Slip-Ins for the whole family at a Skechers store, Skechers.com, or wherever stylish footwear is sold. Who do you trust to get at the truth? Tavis Smiley. 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 That's who. The conversation continues right now. It does indeed uh, with uh, Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox, who I'm honored to have on this program and uh, just uh, deeply grateful that she's given us an hour of uh, of her time. Um, you mentioned Jesse Smollett earlier. Let me just ask a quick question about that before I move on to some other things I want to cover with you. Um, what's always fascinating for me um, regarding the Jesse Smollett case is that, uh, to the point you made earlier, uh, you stood for re-election thereafter and won, uh, and didn't just win, but won handily in that race. But with all these uh, months now in the rearview mirror, when you hear the name Jesse Smollett or you're asked about that case, you have what to say? <laughs> uh, I always chuckle first. Um, <laughs> I heard one that of those too, yeah. as, we, as we talk about, Chicago is a city that has been reeling with violence um, for years. And part of what I ran on was focusing our attention on prosecuting violent crime and not using our limited resources to go after low-level petty offenses. And that's what happened in that case. And I find it fascinating in Chicago that it took up so much energy. People can disagree with whether they thought he should have had a stiffer penalty or not. Prosecutors throughout our history have had the opportunity to to use their discretion to do just that. And we have spent more time over the course of the last five years talking about the one black man who did not go to prison for a nonviolent low-level offense then we have the hundreds of black men who have walked out of prison, convicted of crimes that they didn't commit. And I don't think it's by accident that the conversations have revolved around Jesse and not these broader issues. Um, I think it's actually quite deliberate. I don't mind uh, saying that we handle Jesse's case in a way that we handle many other low-level nonviolent offenses. In fact, there have been studies done that show that we've sent far fewer people to prison for low-level nonviolent offenses, largely black and brown folk, um, during the course of this tenure. And so it has been, to me, an outsized distraction from the broader issues of criminal justice in Cook County, that if Jesse Smollett and not John Burge and the wrongful convictions of hundreds of black men for crimes that they didn't commit is the greatest uh, criminal justice failure of the Cook County justice system. We got a real big problem on our hands. Um, you got dragged a lot. Um, I don't need to tell you. I don't need to tell you. You got the scars. I'm sure to prove it. But you got <laughs> you got dragged uh, pretty uh, pretty aggressively and pretty viciously during that period. Um, and yet, I, I often remind people because I've been through this in my own career that we are not human and divine. We're just human. Uh, and when you get dragged, you feel it. Um, tell me a bit more, if you can, and if you're willing to, personally, how you navigated that period of your life. Um, thank you for first the recognition that I was a human going through that. Uh, it was really, it was very intense. Um, that the the noise around that case or the eruption happened at a time in my life where I lost a cousin. Um, to a, who was 19 years old, um, who was shot in the head. And there were reporters who who showed up at the funeral trying to get a comment from me um, about Jesse. There were rumors, because people just, it just didn't make sense. It wasn't even just that they didn't like what happened to Jesse, that there must have been something corrupt about me. And so I heard rumors about my daughters, you know, were, were extras on the on the Empire set, um, that my brother, who you know is a Juilliard trained actor, must have been in a relationship with Jesse. So it was, it was these rumors and innuendo and like legitimate media and tabloid media. I had you know TMZ sitting outside my home one day. Um, it was the wear and tear, not just on me but my family, and the fear um, that my children had, that my then husband had, that my my father had. Um, that made me question, was what I doing worth the pain 
that was being inflicted on those around me. Now, you know, again, I grew up in, in Cabrini with women who had endured quite a bit. And mm-hmm. so I, you know, I'm built for this. But there is something to watch the people that you love who had nothing to do with the decision, who don't do this work, who you know want to quietly go to school and go to work, have to wear your decisions in the aftermath um, on them. And yeah. that was very, very difficult for me. Were you ever concerned, uh, we all know how it turned out, as I intimated uh, a moment ago or said a moment ago, um, were you ever concerned that the voters in Cook County were going to punish you for that case? No. What I what I knew was that the 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 vitriol the the, the highest level of vitriol wasn't coming from people um, who were impacted by the system, mm-hmm. and a lot of it wasn't even coming from Chicago. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the the former president, you, you know, got up on a mic in the heart of it and called me corrupt. You know, Don, Donald Trump and his uh, acolytes. They took up all of this. When I would go out in the community, it was very heartening when people said, Kim, we got you. Kim, we know what this is. Kim, we see this. Did I lose some support? Sure. Did I lose significant support? Not at all. And it was a testament to who gets to tell our stories and what's most important to the people who live here. Is it outside media sources? Is it fringe groups? Are the people who live here and see the work that we've done? Uh, I think the man who spent $15 million thinking that he could defeat me on the strength of Jesse Smollett um, has more questions to answer to why he thought that that would work um, and not connect to the people versus connecting to, you know, political moneyed interests. And we demonstrated in that election that the people, the people um, put me in this seat and wanted me to continue. So I mentioned earlier, um, and I celebrated it when it happened, and I still celebrate the fact that you are the first black woman to leave the Cook County State's Attorney's Office. That's a big deal um, for anybody, but particularly um, given what people think of folk coming out of Cabrini, as we established earlier in this conversation, it's an even bigger deal. That said, um, how, how do you process, I know how I process it, but that ain't the point. How do you process that we're in a moment now where there are some pretty powerful black women who are in these prosecutorial positions, whether it's Fonnie Willis in Fulton County, whether it's Letitia James in New York State, whether it's you in Cook County, this is this is a this is a serious moment, is it not? It is a serious moment, I, I, and I want to celebrate the moment and also contextualize. It, sure. Right when when I came into office in 2016. Uh, The Women's Donor Network had done a study out of 2,400 elected prosecutors in this country, less than 1 percent were women of color, Mm -hmm. less than 1 percent. And so if we just took out the black women, you know, we all fit on the same uh, text chain. We had we had a group chat. (laughs) Um, And (laughs) and that that is striking that we could all be on the same group chat, you know. Yeah. And and. Eve, so those numbers began to swell. Like when I ran for office in 2016, I had the benefit of seeing Marilyn Mosby when she was the district attorney or the state's attorney in Baltimore mm-hmm. in the wake of Freddie Gray. I had the benefit of seeing Kim Worthy out of Detroit. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, those women set a stage for me. And I think with my election and the election of Sherry Boston and others, Rachel Rollins in Boston, Massachusetts, we saw more black women ascend to these roles. Tish James, um, Fonnie Willis came post-2016. But those numbers, as they swell, they also have fallen. Um, Marilyn Mosby is no longer the state's attorney in Baltimore. Kim Gardner, who was the first black prosecuting attorney in St. Louis, um, was driven out of office. Rachel Rollins um, has been out of office. And so, You know, these gains that we have seen and these significant women who are carrying our democracy on their backs um, in the wake of what has been intimidation and hatred coming their way is a testament to what black women do. Um, But it does not come without cost. And, you know, the survival rate of black women doing this work is not very high. And so I commend them. I think they are doing incredible work but we have to make sure that we are supporting them. You're listening to Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox on Tavis Smiley, and I'm glad about it. Interrogating and unpacking. That's what we do around here. You're listening to Tavis Smiley. What is dedication? My biggest fear in the middle of my addiction was that my kids wouldn't have a father. 
And I started thinking, you know what? This isn't my story. I definitely had to become a better man to be a better father. It's important to me that my kids are empowered and truly believe that if, if they can think it, they can do it. That's dedication. Visit fatherhood.gov to hear more. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Joey from Vermont. A farmer trying to get through the winter. Adriana from South Carolina. A single mother living paycheck to paycheck. Liam from Ohio, an injured father struggling to provide for his family. Hi, I'm Shanola Hampton, and I support the Feeding America network of food banks because they help provide over 6 billion meals to people in need each year. Learn more at feedingamerica.org. Did you know one of the best investments you can make? It's in yourself. At My Computer Career, in just a few months, you can start your new career in the high-demand, recession-resistant field of information technology. Isn't it time you invest in you and start a career in networking, cybersecurity, AI, or upskill to boost your current IT career? So get the ROI you deserve at My Computer Career. No experience necessary. Start now at mycomputercareer.edu. Financial aid is available for qualified students, including the GI Bill. Hi, this is Quentin. And this is Brianna. A little thing we love about Chick-fil-A chicken strips are how satisfying they are. The chicken strips are amazing. They're always filling, tender and juicy. Definitely one of my favorite things on the menu. My favorite thing is the last bite. The last bite is nice and juicy, and it's wrapped up in some crispy breading that keeps it nice and tasty. And being able to scoop up my Chick-fil-A sauce with it, it's just, like, the best part of the meal. It's an undefeated combo. Order the chicken strips on the Chick-fil-A app today. Real customers paid for their testimonials. Some days I cover up because of my moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Now I'm hitting the road with clearer skin thanks to Sky Rizzy. Rizm Kism of Rizza, a prescription-only 150 milligram injection for adults who are candidates for systemic or phototherapy with sky rizzy three out of four people achieved 90 percent clearer skin at four months and sky rizzy is just four doses a year after two starter doses don't use if allergic to sky rizzy serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur before treatment your doctor should check for infection and tuberculosis tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms such as fever sweats chills muscle aches or cough or if you plan to or recently received a vaccine thanks to sky rizzy there's nothing on my skin and that means everything your doctor today about Sky Rizzy, the number one dermatologist prescribed biologic in psoriasis. And visit skyrizzy.com or call 1-866-SKY-RIZZY to learn more. Smart talk for curious people just like you. Just like you. You're listening to Tavis Smiley. Smiley. Tavis Smiley and uh, Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox. Kim, give what you said moments ago. Um, there are actually two things um, swirling in my head. Um, I don't often do this, but uh, let's just play Jeopardy, and I'll let you choose which one you want to address <laughs> first. Uh, you, you can pick, okay. you can pick off the big board. I I, I want to ask you, given what you said about the survival rate of Black women in these positions, whether or not, if you look back on your eight years, it was worth it. And I also want to ask you, looking back on those eight years, what you are proudest of. So you choose how you want to go at it. Um, I will take a combination, Travis, or uh, Travis okay. for uh, five hundred. Take it, take it, take it, take it. <laughs> I, I, I have, I have no regrets. Uh, absolutely no regrets because I'm most proud of the fact that we have fundamentally changed um, the criminal justice system here in Cook County. Uh, we are the first state in the union to uh, abolish cash bail, and that was work that we were a part of from the very beginning. Uh, we legalized marijuana here in Illinois, and not just that, we vacated the convictions of thousands of people who had convictions uh, under amounts that are now legal, um, particularly, again, to black communities who have been victims of the war on drugs. We stopped prosecuting people for driving on suspended licenses because they couldn't afford to pay tickets. Basically, we stopped criminalizing poverty. And when I think of truly the hundreds of men and women whose lives have been changed because of their wrongful convictions being vacated and the generational impact that it will have on their families, um, there's not a moment of regret. It has been incredibly hard. Um, you know, I've gotten divorced in the course of the last eight years. I've missed out on a lot with my children. Um, 
And I've had to evaluate, you know, what does service look like? And, and history has shown me that service comes with sacrifice. And it has been truly an honor and a privilege to serve the people of Cook County, that the sacrifices that I've made, while painful, um, have been in service to something bigger than just me. And and I could not be more privileged to have that. Yeah, those sacrifices are as real as rain. And I always uh, pray for my friends like you who are in positions like these, because I know the sacrifice that comes along with stepping up. And offering yourself up as a uh, as a public servant, um, and so um, I, I understand that. When we come forward in our remaining moments, I could have started our conversation here, but I will we'll close with it. Um, many of us are concerned and paying attention to uh, this shooting of Dexter Reed. Cornell West was a guest on this program the other day, uh, making his announcement about his running mate, and he even raised the issue of Dexter Reed. So there there are people who are obviously are paying attention to this and want to know a bit more about it, and I wonder what uh, what Kim Foss can tell me about it when we come forward in our remaining moments with her on Tavis Smiley. For all the freedom-loving folk, this is Tavis Smiley. I feel like freedom. If you're like me, 60 and retired, making ends meet, especially here at the supermarket and drugstore is tough. I'm so blessed to have found BenefitsCheckup.org. It's a free and confidential website from the National Council on Aging that connected me to $1,200 a year in programs that help pay for food, medicine, utilities, and more. Maybe it can help you. Benefitscheckup.org. My daughter was diagnosed with a rare malignant rhabdoid tumor on the spine. They sent her straight to St. Jude. My hope was gone. But when you get there, Everyone's like, hey, we're not going to give up. And when you see other people not giving up on your child, that makes all the difference in the world. When I found out I didn't have to pay, I was just grateful. They saved my baby's life. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. KBLA Talk 1580 reminding you that we keep us safe. Pro Football Hall of Famer and urban peace pioneer Jim Brown believed in just that. So he founded the Amera I Can Foundation for Social Change in 1988, focusing on at-risk and high-risk youth in underserved schools and juvenile detention facilities, as well as adult incarceration and reentry initiatives. The core of the Amera I Can program is its 15-chapter life skills curriculum. Mastery of these skills allows individuals to meet their academic academic potential, conform their behavior to acceptable societal standards, and improve the quality of their lives by equipping them with what they need to confidently and successfully contribute to society. Today, the foundation is led by its president, Monique Brown, who has been actively involved in the organization for more than 25 years. The Amera ICANN Foundation continues its work in memory of its founder, actor, philanthropist, and NFL legend, Jim Brown. To get involved or make a donation, please visit visit AmeriCanCommunity.Partners. That's AmeriCanCommunity.Partners. This is a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. My mom has taken up going to the park to practice yoga. My dad's going to a club, but not a book club, a salsa club. Finding new hobbies comes with age. My mom has started getting lost and not knowing where she's going. Becoming lost or disoriented doesn't. Confusion with time or place may be a sign of Alzheimer's. An early diagnosis can help improve the quality of life for your loved one. Learn the warning signs of Alzheimer's at 10signs.org. Brought to you by the Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council. Oh, I can't believe tax season is here already. But look at all this info I have to enter. Phil's small accounting firm is growing in numbers. Why didn't I take that typing class in high school? A data entry specialist could really help him in a crunch. I got blisters on my fingers! Indeed can help him hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. Let's get back to more of Tavis Smiley right now. Got four minutes left here with uh, Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox. Uh, we, she was talking earlier about... Um, 
group uh, group chats and uh, <laughs> and the like. Um, I was just texting the other day with my friend Father Michael Flager. Of course, we all know on the South Side of Chicago, mm-hmm. Saint Sabinus. Uh, he and I were texting the other day, and uh, Dr. West was in the studio the other day, and we were talking about uh, Dexter Reed Jr. This case was March 21, as I recall. Uh, almost 100 shots fired by cops in 41 seconds. Uh, the mayor, who's been a guest on this program in Chicago, uh, uh, lives on the west side. Uh, and I keep reading these stories about all these pretextual stops on the west side. And I don't know all the details of this, but it has become a national story. When you get shot at 100 times in 41 seconds by a number of cops, what can you tell me about the Dexter Reed Jr. case? Uh, I can say that we are in the very early stages of our investigation. Uh, The Civilian Office of Police Accountability is leading that investigation. Um, What you have said is correct, that this is an incident that happened as a result of Dexter Reed Jr. being pulled over for what was alleged to be a seatbelt violation um, that ended with the Chicago police officer shot and injured and Dexter Reed um, dead. So we are, you know, looking at it to see if there are any criminal aspects for our office related to the shooting. Uh, It will take time. Um, And certainly we're asking for people's patience Mm -hmm. as we go through this um, and and seek justice um, in this case. Um, And what have you learned over eight years that you are willing to share with me about police? And I don't want to cover that question any more than that. You're the state's attorney um, (laughs) and uh, you're on both sides of this coin. But what have you learned about police? I, listen, I think we need our police to be legitimate and credible in order for us to have any meaningful chance to address violent crime in our communities. Communities that don't trust police will then take care of these situations themselves, what we would call street justice. And no one benefits from that. And that is because of a breakdown in the legitimacy of our institutions. We have in Chicago um, a consent decree. Uh, that was entered uh, after the murder of Laquan McDonald by mm-hmm. Jason Van Tyke. There's work uh, that the Chicago Police Department needs to do to be in compliance with that. And that's not a Kim Fox proclamation. That's the Department of Justice said that there was unconstitutional, racially biased policing in Chicago. And it is my hope that there's an appreciation that the violence that we see in our communities is directly tied to the legitimacy of policing so that there is an urgency to fix the institutions so that the people who need and rely upon it have the faith um, in its credibility. I got 60 seconds left, so uh, let me close by asking, uh, so what's next, Kim Fox? <laughs> you could have had 20 seconds. I have no idea. <laughs> we could have wrapped that up in five. I have no idea. Um, I've been in public service for almost almost 30 years. Uh, I'm going to take a moment to, to rest, uh, to reset my neurons. I've been in fight or flight uh, for the last eight years, and there's something calling me uh, to rest. Yeah. And so after I rest, I certainly want to still have impact, um, continue to make my people proud. And what that looks like, I'm, I'm waiting for the universe to tell me. As the old folks say, uh, you done good, Kim Fox. You done good. You done good. Uh, and uh, I am honored to have had you on this program. Thank you for your work and your witness. Thank you for your service. Thank you for the many accomplishments. And thank you just for your story and for sharing your story. Your story is in and of itself inspiring to a lot of people. And for that, I celebrate you. Good to have you on. I'll talk to you somewhere down the road. I hope, Kim. Indeed. Please. Anytime, Tavis. This has been a privilege. Pleasure's all mine. Kim Fox, uh, Cook County State's attorney. More of Tavis Smiley when we come forward.